the Honorable Speaker of Parliament, <coughs> the Honorable Prime Minister, Honorable Ministers and Assistant Ministers, Honorable Leader of Opposition, Honorable Members of Parliament, Ladies and Gentlemen, Ms. Ayanda Vilanka. Honorable Speaker, I rise to deliver my statement on the, on the status of tim timber treatment in Fiji. Honorable Speaker, I'm delivering this statement because the issue of selling substandard treated timber on the domestic market is a cause for concern and has become one of the critical national interests. Last month, Honorable Pramila Kumar raised this issue in the media, and so did the Consumer Council of Fiji, raising a crucial, crucial question on the role of the Ministry of Forestry in this regard. I must thank the Honorable uh, Pramila Kumar and the uh, Consumer Council of Fiji for raising this important issue especially when we are faced with the serious challenges relating to the incursion of the Asian subterranean termites. Honorable Speaker, as you may all know, the main purpose of treating timber with chemicals is to protect the timber from insect attack and fungal decay, making it more durable and be able to last longer in service. Without treatment, many species of timber, including pine, will not be suitable for use in exposed and ground contact situations. Honorable Speaker, timber treatment therefore substantially extends this, the service life of timber, particularly those with lower natural durability classes, including a number of our native timbers and our main plantation species. It must however be noted that, that the treating of timber with chemicals is not compulsory. This is because some untreated timbers from species such as pine can be used without any problems for some specific end users, especially for non-load bearing and in fully protected situations and out of ground contact. Also, low-grade timbers destined for boxing purposes are not normally treated. Honorable Speaker, at the same time, there are native species, the hardwood of which are naturally durable and do not need to be treated. So in the market, one has a choice of purchasing either treated or untreated timber, depending on one's requirements. It is only when a timber processor elects to undertake timber treatment that the current legislation comes into play to ensure that certain quality and safety standards are met. Honorable Speaker, the Minister of Forestry currently regulates the operations of all timber treatment plants in the country, as required under the Forest Regulations of 1992. As we speak, we have 29 registered timber treatment plants, and so far 14 are licensed to operate this year. These plants are licensed annually and are monitored on a quarterly basis. The monitoring of these plants focuses on operator competency, health and safety control, where timber sam samples are located on a monthly basis for testing, looking at the concentration and penetration of preservative chemicals in the timber to ensure that these are within required standards. Honorable Speaker, different end users have different levels of chemicals with assigned buildings, including H2, which is used for interior use. It is fully protected from the weather and not in ground contact. H3, for exterior use, not in ground contact. H4, up posts, which has low risk and ground contact. H5, poles, which are high risk and ground contact. H6, posts and poles, which are, which are usually of marine use. All licensed timber treatment plants should have the appropriate branding gears to enable them to brand their treated timbers showing the treatment plant ID number, the chemical used, and the hazard level to which the timber has been treated. One end of every piece, one end of every, of every piece of treated timber should be branded as described. Honorable Speaker, the Forest Regulations 1992 mandates the Ministry of Forestry to license and monitor the operation of timber treatment plants, but does not authorize the Ministry of Forestry to, to ensure that timber users only buy timbers which are treated according to the legally prescribed standards. We can only advise and offer our assistance in the proper specification of timbers and also in the ins inspection to ensure that the specifications have been followed. Honorable Speaker, the Minister of Forestry has been working tirelessly over the years, carrying out awareness and training with timber retailers and hardware shops, and also using the radio talkback shows and the Naikatalao TV program to educate and to raise awareness to the general public. 
Honorable Speaker, consumers need to know and under understand what they are buying for and what they need to ask retailers as well as seek in the specifications, the level of treatment and what hazard level the timber is suitable for. As this issue of substandard timbers continues to be a challenge, especially in the face of incursion of the Asian subterranean termites, the Ministry is at the moment exploring the possibility of developing a timber marketing regulation to also oversee the operation of timber retailers. Honorable Speaker, it is important to note that treating timber with chemicals is not only part of the solution. Proper design of buildings and proper specification of building materials go a long way in ensuring that we are better protected, especially against the termites.